Hey buddy. Last month, a press release revealed that a radio telescope in Australia was able to observe multiple narrow beam radio signals coming from Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to Earth. These signals appeared to be intelligent. We hear natural radio signals coming from space all the time. However, we've been trying to communicate with the Centauri stars for decades now. And this was the first time we ever heard anything back. But this isn't the first time that people have claimed to have heard a radio signal coming from space. The UFO community is pretty sure that this has happened a few times before. Like the famous WOW signal from 1977, or Tesla's repeating space signal from 1899. UFO researchers will also often cite Donald Keyhole, who in 1954 told newspapers that the United States Air Force found two satellites orbiting the Earth, well before any man-made satellite had been launched into space. The most popular suspected culprit the UFO community attributes to extraterrestrial communication, they call the Black Knight Satellite, an object that is supposedly in a polar orbit above the Earth. They say that it's a piece of alien technology that was left here thousands of years ago to observe humanity, sending radio signals down to Earth. This photo was taken in 1998 by one of the shuttles. And People say that they believe that it looks like a rock to camouflage it as a natural satellite. This idea plays off of the concept of Bracewell probes, a hypothetical piece of technology that could be used by very distant alien civilizations to observe us here on Earth. The idea is, if a civilization wants to passively observe humanity, waiting for us to reach a certain level of technological ability, they would leave a probe hidden somewhere in orbit around our planet or somewhere in our solar system until one day we learn to communicate with it. The probe would then relay our communication back to the planet of origin, letting them know that we're ready for contact. Or the probe would destroy us. Either or. Is there something to this? Has there been a piece of alien technology trying to communicate with us here on Earth? Have we ever observed an alien craft in our solar system? Well, before we answer that question, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Raycon. 2021 is a chance for new beginnings. And what better way to start off the new year than with some self-improvement? I spent last year getting my health and fitness on track, and using these Raycon Everyday E25 earbuds made my workouts fun. Raycon is disrupting the electronics industry by designing premium wireless audio for half the price without compromise. They're doing things differently than other brands. From the way they design their products to the way they price them, Raycon prioritizes their customer experience from start to finish. Raycon was co-founded by Ray J and has the backing of several artists in the industry such as Snoop Dogg, Brandy, and Melissa Etheridge. The best part is no cables. No tangling when you're using the weight bench. Whether you're taking up a new hobby, hiking or running, art or photography, or you just want to make your day-to-day -day a little more comfortable, like listening to podcasts while doing chores around the house. Raycons are the perfect way to bring premium audio to everything you do. These everyday E25s are ultra compact and comfortable. Don't fall out when you shake your head. And I often forget that I'm even wearing them. Raycons offer more bass, have seamless Bluetooth pairing, give you six hours of playtime, and they offer their wireless earbuds in a range of fun colors and patterns in a more compact design with a variety of size options to help you get that perfect noise isolating fit. And if that's not enough, Raycon earbuds offer a 45 day free return policy but at half the price, you can't go wrong. And I'm here to make them even cheaper for you today. All you gotta do is click that link in the description below. Or go to buyraycon.com slash skeptic to get 15% off of your Raycon purchase. By clicking that link, you help to support the Armored Skeptic. <laughs> The
There are multiple theories surrounding the Black Knight satellite photo, amalgamating several unexplained radio phenomena. The first example comes from Nikola Tesla's early radio experiments. In 1899, long before humans were using radios to communicate, Tesla was able to observe a repeating signal that appeared to be coming from space. When he first observed it, he said, quote, We are getting messages from the clouds 100 miles away, possibly many times that distance. Do not leak it to the reporters. He actually mentioned this observation many times in interviews throughout his life, fairly certain that his instruments detected an intelligent signal. Tesla was the master of electromagnetic phenomena during the turn of the century, and radio waves are a form of light. Every planet and body in space is transmitting radio signals. This is how Saturn sounds. It almost sounds like it repeats, like there's an intelligently designed signal. To someone with an untrained ear, that could sound like a song or a message. With no experience listening to bodies in space, Tesla could very easily have mistaken a natural signal as intelligent. It's much more likely that Tesla had detected a pulsar, a type of star that rotates very rapidly, throwing off beams of light in quick succession. Pulsars were not discovered until much later in 1967, but anybody with a radio tuned to listen to one would hear a repeating signal each time a beam of light crossed the path of the Earth. But even knowing the natural explanation for this, many members of the UFO community still want to believe that this was, in fact, an intelligent communication from space coming from the Black Knight satellite. I guess that it's possible that it was an alien signal, but with no other references to this during that time period, no audio recording, and nothing to compare it to during that time period, we have to assume that it's more than likely a natural signal. The most well-known example of a strange transmission from space is the famous WOW signal. In 1977, this strange signal was detected by the Big Ear Radio Telescope. At the time, it was pointed at Chi Sagittari in the Sagittarius constellation. When scanning the skies around the stars, they captured a 72-second long burst of radio waves. Astronomer Jerry Iman circled the reading and wrote WOW next to it, which is how it got its name. Lovers and believers in the WOW signal have been celebrating it ever since because of its obscurity, but people have scanned those stars many, many times since then and have yet to hear anything similar, at least nothing as impressive. So either that was a one-time radio signal coming from those star systems, or we have to assume that something was passing through the sky at that time while the telescope was listening to that region. Of course, people want to believe that this is yet another example of the Black Knight satellite at work, or some other Bracewell probe. But again, it's much more likely this was a natural signal. Clue number one is that the signal seems totally random. There appears to be no pattern or intelligence behind it at all. It was just a long burst of random signal. And clue number two is that the signal was picked up at the 1420 megahertz frequency, which just so happens to be the frequency that hydrogen naturally transmits at. And the tail of a comet is usually comprised almost entirely of hydrogen gas which is blasting off the surface from the heat of the sun. Well, it just so happens that two comets, 266P Christensen and 335P Gibbs, were crossing our skies at that exact time. It's almost certain that this signal was being picked up from the chaotic release of hydrogen gas emitting from the surface of those comets. After the Tesla signal, the second most popular candidate for the Black Knight satellite was from amateur radio operator Jorgen Halls from Oslo, Norway. In 1928, he noted that while sending signals towards the moon, he was getting a long delayed radio echo. While sending signals up into space, they would bounce back at him with a long delayed echo. Members of the UFO community have argued that this is a function of the Black Knight satellite. 
that it would receive a signal and bounce it back at you with a delay as a form of communication. Again, radio waves are a form of light, and light should travel almost instantly from sender to receiver and back. Typically, if you send a signal from a ham radio, you should receive that signal back almost instantly. But for some reason, he was getting it back late. Now, long delayed radio echoes in and of themselves are not totally unheard of. Ham radio operators actually report them all the time. We had double echoes coming back on 160 this morning. I'm going to demonstrate on QSK. But what made this incident strange is that it happened while Halls was sending signals towards the moon. There are several possibilities as to how this phenomenon could happen naturally. For example, it's possible that his signal was bouncing off of a body further out in space than the moon, or that his signal was bouncing around the Earth several times before it came back to his radio, or that it got caught in the ionosphere. There's no reason to believe that it was the Black Knight satellite. In 1973, Duncan Lunnan wrote an article proposing that this particular radio echo observed in 1928 was indeed a Bracewell probe. He concluded that the probe arrived here 13,000 years ago and was sent from the planet Epsilon Buddhist, claiming it had a message describing the planet and its moons. He claims that the signal came through as a television image, mapping out the location of the planet, and when he charted it out, discovered it was mapped where the planet would have been at 11,000 BC. But what's really interesting about this particular incident is that the author Duncan Lunnan has publicly denied that his findings have anything to do with the Black Knight satellite. He was actually insulted that people conflated his findings with the Black Knight theory at all, as he believes what he experienced was due to some sort of technology or device that was either in orbit around the moon or with the moon. Like, maybe Maybe even something hiding behind the moon. This got me wondering, why is it that every single radio-related phenomenon is attributed to the Black Knight? Why do people in the UFO community want so badly to believe that this thing is trying to communicate with us? Is this to cover up the real source of some sort of unexplained signal? Is this to amalgamate a bunch of actual alien signals into one easily debunkable, silly theory? Because, here's the thing, this isn't a satellite, it's not a piece of alien technology, it's not even a rock, it doesn't transmit radio signals. This is a thermal blanket. A protective cover that was removed from a satellite launched in 1998. This is a photo of the blanket floating away from the shuttle. There's another photo of this from another angle, and you can clearly see that it has changed shape. It isn't even rigid, and it sure as hell isn't in polar orbit. The Black Knight satellite is the least believable UFO theory that I've ever come across. However, in recent history, there has been an example of a possible Bracewell probe that I personally believe may actually be real. A true, honest to God, piece of alien technology that has visited our solar system. And as far as I know, we completely failed to communicate with it before it left. In 2017, astronomers announced that, for the first time in recorded history, an object from outside of our solar system was falling towards the sun. Named Oumuamua, this supposed comet had traveled here from deep space. Based on its speed, astronomers estimate that it took at least 50,000 years to reach our solar system from its system of origin. And it's been in our solar system since at least 1837. And the funniest part is that we didn't even see it for the first time until it had already slung shot around the sun and was on its way out of the system again. It's hard to tell exactly what we should expect from something that came from outside of our solar system, but when we finally got a good look at this thing, it defied our understanding of what deep space objects are possible in nature. With the way that it was moving, they say that Oumuamua was not 
not an asteroid, but was behaving much more like a comet. However, it never at any point ejected a tail of gas like we would expect from a typical comet. The object was also much shinier than it should have been. It reflected a lot more light than a typical comet would, making it stand out from other objects in our sky. Astronomers estimate that its speed was already pretty quick as it was coming into the solar system, but after it slung shot around the sun, it sped up a lot, like way too much. It is normal for objects to speed up a little bit after they slingshot around stellar objects, but we've never observed a comet speed up that much after going around the sun. And its shape makes no sense at all. We have no explanation for how a comet could possibly form in the shape of a cigar. We've never observed that in nature, ever. So now we have to rethink what it may look like. And as shown in this beautiful painting by space artist Bill Hartman, we think that Oumuamua may be more of a flattened oval. Oh, I'm sorry. It was in the shape of a disc? Has, it, has anybody ever heard of that before? A, a, a disc? A, sh a shiny disc flying through space? I've, am I the first one to ever hear about this? I actually find it so bizarre that even the UFO community doesn't mention that detail, and they're all stuck pretty firm on the cigar shape explanation, even though the astronomers that studied it say that it might be disc-shaped. Why does nobody mention that detail? Astronomers also noted that it displayed both pitch, tilt, and yaw while tumbling through space. One would think maybe that has something to do with its bizarre shape, that it may have melted in a bizarre way, but it actually should have melted in a much more uniform fashion. Years later, astronomers tried to explain why the object sped up by claiming that jets of hydrogen gas released from under the comet's surface while it got close to the sun, which acted like natural thrusters pushing the object out. But hydrogen gas makes a big mess when it ejects from a comet. And astronomers also tried to claim that the bizarre shape of the object was due to its composition, proposing that it formed isolated in deep space, comprised almost entirely of frozen hydrogen. That sounds like a nice neat explanation, a tidy little answer for that problem. But that's basically impossible. Any amount of light, even faint starlight in deep space, would be enough to melt a solid block of hydrogen at least stop it from forming. But not only that, a block of frozen hydrogen would definitely leave a giant tail of gas behind it as it was approaching the sun, and would probably all but disintegrate after it got too close. We firmly believe it's likely to be a leftover archaeological remnant from the process of the birth of another planetary system. Still others suggest that maybe this is something that formed during the death throes of a star perhaps during a supernova explosion. Whatever it is, we believe it's a natural object, but we can't actually prove that it's not something artificial. The only explanation that makes sense for what we observed in 2017 is aliens. Now, I'm not saying that it's aliens, but it's aliens. <laughs> What if this was a craft designed to transport cargo or people across vast distances in deep space? Assuming that it would take thousands of years to get from their planet of origin to their new destination, they would have to get clever with preserving fuel and using solar wind to propel their craft. If they aren't using fuel or engines to thrust themselves through space, it makes total sense that they would intentionally slingshot themselves around stars and suns to propel themselves. It's also possible that they employed a type of solar sail technology, a hypothetical sail device that captures the natural winds of the sun. Riding the energy of the sun, much like a sailboat rides the wind across the ocean. That would explain why the object sped up as it left the system. The sun was literally 
pushing it. Just as I finished writing the script for this video, several articles were released promoting a Harvard professor, Avi Loeb, who claims that he believes that this was a discarded piece of alien technology. Space garbage from another civilization. This is a fun way of looking at it, but I find it hard to believe that it wasn't on a set trajectory, as its slingshot and acceleration was so perfect and efficient. I think that it was intentionally sent to our sun as a checkpoint along its journey. Regardless of what a Moa Moa was, there are currently no theories that explain what we observe. Why not do the obvious experiment and search for a radio signal. That's exactly what the Breakthrough Listen project did. But so far, Oumuamua has remained completely quiet. The first object to enter our solar system from deep space remains a huge mystery. A true alien encounter. Tell me what you guys think. Have aliens left behind pieces of technology for us to find? Is there an alien satellite around the Earth or the Moon trying to communicate with us? Was a Moa Moa an alien craft or just a really neat rock that we can't figure out? Let me know in the comments section below. And subscribe to my second channel, Armored Gregory, where I make follow-up videos responding to my favorite comments. Make sure to hit like and the subscribe button right now. Guys, that helps me out so much. And of course, I would like to thank my loyal patrons and channel members for supporting this channel. I couldn't do this without you. You're amazing.